Welcome. This is For Better and Worth. The podcast where we don't believe you have to sacrifice your relationship while you grow and build your net worth. We are your hosts. I'm Chris. And I'm Erica Young. And we're so glad you're joining us today. All right, y'all. Let's get into it. Hey, babe. How are you? Hello. (laughs) Back at it. (laughs) Yes, indeed. And we're going to talk about, I think, a hot topic today. You ready? I'm ready because I think this is something that uh, everybody wants to talk about. You know, they want to know what the do's and the don'ts are. So we're going to get into this whole credit report and credit score situation and, you know, see what see what the people really think about this. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, though, I think a lot of people are scared to discuss their credit report and score. They're curious, but they're afraid of looking at it and uncovering what is there. So I just want to lift the veil, if you will, and normalize this conversation so that people can get what they need from it. So yeah, let's get into it, honey. So I feel like we have a really, I don't know if it's unique. Maybe it is unique. I think it's unique. I think we have a unique backstory as to why partners need to have this conversation around their credit report. You remember when we first had an, what do you call it? An intersection or a run in or a moment with credit reports? Well, of course I remember. (laughs) How could I forget? I know. I talk about it all the time. And I know that, you know, when I'm doing talks in front of people, I, I do mention it quite a bit, but I just, you know, I'm curious on your take on how that whole moment went. Let's tell the folks. You know, when we first uh, when we were first getting together and decided we were going to get married, we went through premarital counseling, and so this just you know just a backstory for you all so you understand. <laughs> and in that premarital counseling, it seems like one of the first things we did um, after like the first or second initial session. The uh, the pastor was like, hey, I want you to bring your credit reports to the next next meeting. We were like, huh? Credit Mm-mm. report? Like, yeah. I was, about? I was not up for that. I was like, dude, we are not ready for this. I was like, I was like, she don't know me. <laughs> I know. Exactly. Exactly. But anyway, we came to the next session and we brought our, our credit reports thinking that we were going to like give them to him and he was going to review them or something. I don't know what we were thinking, but like why would we give our credit reports to the pastor and let him scrutinize them like i don't know i don't know i just think back to it like what were we thinking like why do we think he was gonna look at them it's so funny because i really did think that and to some degree that would have been easier than what really happened (laughs) right that's funny that that would have been easier to have someone else look at your credit report that wasn't me and take judgment from them than to take potential judgment from me because what he did. But before you even go there, babe, we do that all the time. Somebody pulls our credit report and we may not see it and your partner may not see it, but they will judge you and say whether or not you can get an auto loan or a home loan, et cetera, based on the data you're giving to them. And so I think that's why our minds went straight to, oh, he wants to see it himself and help you with that or share something about it. I guess. I guess when you put it in that context, that could be it. But I don't know. I just look in retrospect. It seems weird now. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Like I wasn't applying for a car. I wasn't (laughs) applying for a house or, you know, anything else at that point that I would have been applying for. I was just trying to. You know, I'm going through marriage counseling. So to bring a credit report, I don't know. But anyway. It sounds like TMI. That definitely is what it right, sounds like. Right. Anyway, we what we did was we gave them to, to the pastor when we were going through this counseling. And he promptly exchanged them and gave them to each of us. Right. So I had yours and you had mine. And it was like, oh, okay, this 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 what we're doing. Oh, all right. And I think... I tinkled a little, okay? <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Did, did you? Wow. I was scared. Were you scared? I didn't care. <gasps> Are you serious right now? Yeah, I was like, whatever, you know, because I knew what I had done with credit up to that point, And, 
you know, I knew that I had some, I paid my credit cards, but I just kind of paid them when I, you know, they, they weren't always on time, but I always paid, you know, what I owed. And I didn't have a lot at that stage, but still I was like, whatever, you know, it, it doesn't define who I am. Oh, well, I had a totally different feeling because. I had on that credit report at that time, a lot of things. I wasn't done with college, Mm -hmm. but I definitely, the student loans were starting to rack up and they, they report on there even before you're done with school. Yep. yep. I had those on mine. And then I had a car payment and I also had credit cards. And the biggest thing, and even, even with all of that debt, even with all of that, the biggest thing that I was really concerned about was that I actually had a delinquency on there. There was something that the very first thing that I put on my credit card was something that I didn't pay for months. Um, no one taught me the responsibility with the credit card. I honestly didn't have many bills, right? So my car payment, I was really like, I got to get this transportation. So I paid that joker, but I did not think about credit cards so seriously and intently because nobody was coming after me for that. I think you bring up a good point, though, because we both got these credit cards when we were early on in college. And I think by the time we were doing this, I was closer to graduating from college and you had a little longer to go. But like I had got a, you know, I think I had got a car and, you know, things like that. So we, the, the, the funny part is that both of our credit reports looked almost the exact same that's true it's true we had about the same amount of student loans we had similar car notes we had similar number of credit cards so it really was if you're gonna judge me it's like a mirror yeah and that was actually that's what helped me to relax a little bit that's that's what helped me to say all right i'm not in this by myself but how did you get your first credit card oh man the easy way when i was in college you know, on college campus, I did. I think uh, I got one on campus, and then I like I don't even remember how I got a. You remember Discover card? I got a Discover card, like somehow, and that one was the worst. Yeah. But it was like, man, they gave me that Discover, and I had I don't even remember what my very first one was. That's that's terrible. I don't even remember what it was, but I know I was using those to supplement different things. And being in college, you know, I didn't have a lot of money, so. I was, like, using it to buy, like, clothes sometimes when I needed it. Or, you know, I put a little something for groceries on one of those cards. But those were those were the two that I knew I had at that point. I don't remember who my creditor was. But I do remember that they bribed me on campus with a T-shirt and a pizza. I remember that specifically in the union of my university, the student union. And I thought I was making out like, yeah, I got dinner for tonight. And then that just shows you how broke college students can be. Literally. And you were moved by a a busted T-shirt and a pizza. I was. I was. And you know what? Shame on me. Okay, like the joke was on me because. Honestly, I didn't know what I was doing. And the craziest thing is that these companies, okay, they see potential in us because they're like, oh, they're they're a college student. They're going to make money. But truly, we didn't have any at the time. Like we're, you know, we're broke. So why do you think it's a good idea to give a broke person, somebody literally with no income, a credit card? Mm -mm. It really it really should be shame on those universities like that. I don't even know why they still let these you know, car companies come and set up their little table and sign up all these kids for credit cards because they know they're setting them up for, you know, something that's bad. They get paid. The university gets paid to let them be in there. So, and that's, yeah, that's that's a a whole different conversation. It's predatory. It's predatory. But anyway, yes, that's not what we're here for today. It is the beginning of our journey though. It is. It is. It is. And, you know, I don't know. I guess we were both learning and, you know, developing credit at that point, even though nobody was giving us any real guidelines. There was no roadmap. It's like we just out here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so do you feel like seeing my credit report at that moment in time created tension or any mistrust at that point? I think uh, when you when you look at the credit report and then you look at the credit score, 
it tells it tells you or in my mind it tells you like uh if you've been responsible or not or if you've been irresponsible because think about it if if you if i saw like a credit score of like five or six hundred which i don't even remember what it was back then because i don't even think we looked at the scores we just looked at the report but if you see somebody and you know they have a credit score of five or six hundred what's the first thing that comes to your mind Mm, and responsibility they ain't pay their bills exactly (laughs) exactly you like man these people they are they are not responsible Mm -hmm. but you don't know what the circumstance could be that got them to that point but immediately we have this judgment Mm -hmm. and if you see somebody who has a credit score of 800 you're like oh man they've been they've been responsible they pay their bills on time and so people attribute characteristics to the score yeah, and you do. don't know you don't know what people's situations are that allow them to get in a position where they have a high score or to get in a position to have a low score, and so I guess the the answer to the question is, you know, I was love struck. <laughs> I love it. Did you see past my credit report? I was like, was she in school? Is she gonna get a <laughs> an engineering degree? I was like, she has potential. You said she has potential. <laughs> Did you think you could fix me? I'm real curious about this now. Wow. Well, I you asking questions I don't know the answers to. I mean, it's it's valid. I don't know. I don't know if I was thinking uh thinking that, but you know me, I'm always glasses half half full. Yeah. You know, so I'm the eternal optimist in most situations where you know, I'm a visionary. I look, I can see things and I can forecast ahead. So even in that moment, to me, it didn't matter what it was. It was like, hey, we'll work it out. Yeah, and I think it was easier for us because we had the same amount of debt, basically. There was no real serious discrepancy between what was on there. I think for me, my insecurity was in that delinquency that, you know, because honestly, you could have all of that debt. You could have a car payment, a student loan, and credit cards and have a good score. But yeah. because... I had that delinquency that was pulling my score down and I was insecure about that. And so I think I really was like, what is he going to say about that in particular? And the truth is, it sounds like it didn't matter or, you know, you weren't scrutinizing it like I was scrutinizing. Well, well, we got to put a pin in there because you said something. Okay. Like, first of all, we our credit reports were very similar. Right. So our scores were probably similar that's at that time. But you said somebody could have a high score, but they could have a high score because they've got multiple credit cards. They got car notes. They got other they got massive amounts of debt because a credit score is really a good debt score. It's an I love debt score. Right. And so you can look at and and I already talked about previously how you can look and put try and attach characteristics. But typically people only attach the positive characteristics and not the negative characteristics of a high a high credit score. Yeah, because a lot of people, I mean, I've I've definitely had clients where they had a lot of debt and they also had great scores and they're juggling things in order to make it work and that doesn't bode well either. So that's not always right. a pretty sight. They've got a high they got a high uh, credit score with all that debt, but yet They're seeking professional help. Right, exactly. To get out of debt and to get back on track. So it's like you start to wonder, like, man, does the does the credit report and score really matter? And so here's something I pose to you. You know, really, how much of a role do, do you think credit reports play when you talk about the overall success of a couple's journey towards getting out of debt? Because that's a that's a perfect segue. Well, I don't think credit reports matter in like you can get out of debt and not worry about the credit reports. You, you literally can, you can get out of debt and just say, forget it. I don't care about the credit report. Um, there is that option. I think that people though, who are in debt need to think about it because, and so what I mean is you might have to play their game. (laughs) You might have to play their game. If you're still in debt, the you you want to keep the door open, your options open to be able to potentially refinance a vehicle if your your credit score is low and as your credit score gets higher, you might be able to 
refinance, you know, a car loan or a home loan and get a lower interest rate. And so the credit report and score could matter. And then if there are errors on it, get that stuff taken off. I mean, right. that, that's the other thing. So so I think it's responsible to look at it and and see what's there. But I, I don't think that you have to worry about it in the context of if you're getting out of debt, your score is going to heal over time. Um, if you're not looking to get new credit, maybe it doesn't matter as much. But I think a person can get out of debt easily without worrying about their score. It's just... You know, I I don't know that it's the most responsible way to behave because if you're getting out of debt, you you might need debt for something. You might need access to credit for some of the bigger things. And typically I say that is for car debt as well as for a home mortgage. But I think you've got to key in on the characteristics that are going to make you successful overall in the relationship because we're talking about couples merging money revealing and exposing these things about themselves and their past behaviors whether they were good or bad because if you're entering into a relationship and you have your money situation they have their money situation and we talk about you know the money past how it shapes people and you're in the present and you're dealing with whatever you're dealing with I think the thing you have to really look at is how are we going to maneuver to the next thing as we create a future? So I feel like when you talk about can a couple be successful, um, I don't think the credit report and score matters. What I think matters is the decision that you make to create the path that you want to go down and what your future is going to look like. And if you're currently in debt and you have, you know, let's just say a moderate credit score, You almost have to just continue to maintain that because, like you said, you may need that. But I think more importantly, you're building habits like you're going to start dumping debt. Right. That means you got to pay things on time. You got to pay things off. You got to figure out how to put extra on it. And in a relationship, that's where you can help each other. And so the commitment goes beyond the credit score. It goes beyond the credit report. Because you want to heal the behaviors. And when you heal the behaviors, then you start doing things differently. And when you do those things differently and you're on one accord, you, you're on the same team, you know, one band, one sound. Yeah. It's like that's when you start to get results. Mm-hmm. And at the end of, end of the day, that's what people are looking for in a relationship is to have results. And those results can help create a solid foundation that you guys are building upon. And so I don't think it is negative. I think it just highlights, hey, we need to work on this. You Mm -hmm. know, you had some you had a delinquency like, all right, well, how do we make sure that you don't do that anymore? Mm -hmm. I think that um, if we are a team, then we have to set some ground rules and how are we going to play the game? Right. And so. I think that you and I became a good team. I think that was very helpful. Early on, we were like, all right, we're going to figure out how to get out of debt, period. That's just how that was going down. Um, And we also wanted to maintain decent credit because right off in the very beginning, we got a house. Yeah, we were young and starting out. Yeah. We, we had to still leverage. We were in the ac- accumulation phase. We were having right. kids. We right. needed cars. And so... We bought we bought two cars after we got married. So we still had to lean on our credit report mm-hmm. and our credit scores. And I think what we did differently was we just said, okay, we're going down this debt-free path. But to get there, which we've shared with people... We still had to do some other things, right? Like you know, buy a new a newer car. And well, and we we made the choice to true. to buy a vehicle that came with a car payment in our first few years of marriage. And um, nowadays, I don't always say that that's a good thing to do. To to be honest with you, um, 
it kept us in debt a little bit longer. Well, we have we have grown. We have grown. We have gained experience. <laughs> we have. But and sometimes it's idiots come sometimes out of your control. There's a lot of times where people just, you know, they they have a vehicle, it dies on them and they have to get something. And so it's smart, it's wise. Yeah, to, but it's those situations when they have to get something that they don't choose to just get something. They choose to get another forty thousand dollars. Well, off. that's what we what we not gonna do, okay, <laughs> is go so much further into debt right. that it takes you a million years to get right. out, or you just think I mean, because I've heard a lot of people say, you know what, you're gonna always have a car payment. Haven't you heard that? Yeah, I hear that and I'd be like, Man, you you got life messed up. I mean, but this the world culture you know, TV, commercials, the car industry, everybody will make you think that you got to have the latest and greatest and you're going to always have a car note. You always have to have, you know, the newest thing. And I'm just like, it drives me crazy. But I'm also not a huge car person. Like I, I'll get a car and I'm like, let's keep this baby for a little while. I'm not interested in turning it over every three years. Like right. a lot of and people I'm, are. I'm the opposite. I love cars. And so, and you have, you have had the privilege of having a, a vehicle paid for by your company. Most of the time That has been a major benefit for us, but I, I know we're talking about credit cards and credit scores, but I'm, I'm just going to press pause Uh oh. for a second. Oh Lord. Because when you said people are like, Oh, you're going to have a credit card or you're going to have a car. Nope. Forever, yeah. It just made me start thinking, like the way people just think about stuff and buy into what they've been fed. Like, oh, I'm I'm never gonna have, I'm never gonna pay my house off. You know, you're gonna have a mortgage forever. You're gonna have a car note forever. I just want to stop. And anybody who's listening, just dream for a second. Yeah, imagine. Imagine what life could be like with no debt. That's awesome. That's that's a that's you know that's a what they say a pregnant pause. <laughs> you weren't supposed to say nothing. You know it's a pregnant pause for effect. My bad. Try again. Try again. All right. So I want you all to just dream for a second what life could look like with no debt. All right. You got that vision? <laughs> just think about it, man. No mortgage. No car note. None of that. And you just like you go to work and you make income and you can save for your future. You can vacation. You you can do what you want to. Mm-hmm. And you reach a point where you can save enough where you are working. People acting a nut. You like, you know what? They see you over at your desk packing your stuff. Well, what are you doing? You're like, I'm out. I don't need this. Right. That's yeah. that's like liberation. That is freedom. freedom. You know, and so okay, let's get back to you know, <laughs> back to the regularly scheduled. But you know uh, what? Program. I, I I will piggyback off of that because we had over a thousand, almost twelve hundred dollars per month in payments between our car notes, our student loan, and our credit 421, cards. Four twenty one, four twenty one, sixty one. No, 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 no. Four fifty one twenty one was is. our student loan oh, payment that they wanted us to pay for ten years, and I I often. You know, say to people, add up what your debt is in total. What are you paying out in payments? And ours was, like I said, I think it was closer to $1,200 a month at one point. And it's like, what can you do with that? That's the oh, dream. Man. That's right. the dream. You know, but but when we're looking at our credit reports, I mean, in order for your score to be favorable, you need various kinds of debt. I have, I have seen people who have low scores and they only had two credit cards and they... Paid them off, but it just wasn't enough debt to help their score improve, you know? Yeah, well, I think there are ways that while you're still getting out of debt and you can maintain a good a good credit score or even build a credit score because there's alternate means of reporting. And we know, like, we've got, you know, young, young adults, children, and they had apartments, and the apartment complexes could report and... There's other, you know, services out there and things you can do to just pay your bills on time. Bills, you know, you can be debt free, but your bills not gonna go away. Right. I mean, you know? utilities, phones, um, and right. your your rental record, all of that can be reported on your credit report. And that can help build absolutely credit. So, I'm more of an advocate of you know using an alternate means to pay things that you're gonna have to pay regardless. 
And even when you get out of debt, you could still build good credit that not that you would even want to use it. But until you're until you reach a point where you can pay cash for cars or, you know, you have to pay for a home, you know, you can just pay cash for large purchases. Um you can still build credit. Absolutely. And I think that the one, I, the, the ideal situation and my hope and prayer for our children is that they are able to do this is to utilize those alternative methods of being able to report on their credit report. And then when they need a mortgage for them to have a good enough score that they can qualify because they'll have the money, they'll have dollars yeah, in the bank, they'll, they'll have, have the income. down payment. Yeah. And so they can utilize that and that'll be the way that they can acquire. Because I mean, it's, Honestly, pretty unrealistic unless you're starting super duper small um, to to assume that someone is going to purchase their first home with cash. And so so getting a mortgage and making sure that they can get that on a condo or a small place. Hey, I'm all about it. That could be that could actually be the motivation to get out of debt, to get, you know, everything right. So you can purchase a home because that's usually a dream that most people have is to purchase a home. And that's how you build wealth. That's how you create, you know, a, a, a legacy for your family is through home ownership. And so it should be get everything together, you know, buy a home and then work to pay that home off. So you have, you know, assets to pass on and things like that. But do you think a, a, a partner's credit report has an impact on yours? I say it does not because when you and I got together, what happens is that what's on your credit report doesn't simply jump to mine, right? right so right. so that's that doesn't happen. However, if you get a home loan in the both of you your name, both of your credit was pulled, you need both of your incomes and both of your name is on the mortgage. Well, sure, you're going to share whatever happens with that mortgage, be it on time payments or not on time payments. The same goes for um, if you get a credit card and you put your spouse on it. Right. Um, Even as an authorized user, if that isn't paid, it's going to impact you. It will impact you. And so those are the things it doesn't jump from one person to the other just because you got married. But if you get credit together, then, yes, it will have an impact together. So I think a lot of people are always concerned about marrying somebody with that doesn't have a great credit score. Matter of fact, one of our one of the shows that I was watching recently, the you know, my my smut TV. (laughs) um, I watched um, Love is Blind. And one of the couples didn't get married. And I think her reason for not saying yes at the altar was because she found out later in their journey that he didn't have a good credit score. And she is currently of a family who has, you know, a decent amount of money or some wealth. And so she was concerned about that. And I'm sure that's not the only reason, but I think that's interesting. I think that's hard for a lot of people to get over. They, they, they put a lot of weight and value on the idea that, Someone who doesn't have a good credit score or report, that it is more of the measure of that person. And there's so much more to a human than that. It goes back to what I said previously, like the characteristics negatively that people try and assign to someone with a low or, you know, quote unquote, bad credit report. But you don't know what got that person to that situation. And I feel like he probably dodged a bullet because... (laughs) True. If if you judging him like that because he got a bad credit report, that's probably not the person for you. And so. he he had all of his credit credit um cards were paid. Like he said that his debt was paid. It's just when you you can pay off your debt, but if you don't effectively work, there are strategies to work to build your right. score up. He clearly had not done that, or he either was in the process of it. But he, if you have no debt and he still had a lower score. You know, he was he was hurt, honestly. Yeah, he could have been he could have become a cash payer. Yeah. He could, there's a number of things that that in that circumstance or situation that he could have done. I think, you know, the the bigger situation right there that I think people become concerned with is when they get into a relationship and one person has good credit, one person has bad credit, and then they try to do something together. 
And then you have to re- lean on one person's credit yeah. or you have to not put the other person's name on on something. And then you start talking about ownership. We're in a relationship or we're married, but the car is in your name. It's not in my name. I pay for it. Right. But then who owns it? That gets so messy. Right. And that's where I think it can have impact on a partner is when it gets kind of squirrely like that. Yeah. And you got to go into it like with some clear, you know, clear definitions of how we're going to do this. And, you know, and people sometimes they, they, they don't define things, you know, like clearly. Yeah. What do you feel needs to be defined since you brought that up? I think that if you're, so if you're out there listening <laughs> and you're in a relationship, thinking about getting into a relationship, just came out of a relationship or whatever your situation ship is. <laughs> um, I think you just got to be clear. Like, hey, if we're going to do this together, you know, your credit is this. My credit is that. And even if like you have the better credit, I think like you could put the person on there as a a co a co uh it's it's usually an authorized user. Right. Yeah. So put them as a, a authorized user or, you know, if you're going to do something, then be the co-signer, which I really don't endorse co-signing. But know? I mean, in terms but, of in terms of partners. Right. You know? I'm saying in, in a partner relationship, I just think you've got to just be clear on how you're doing it and moving together. Mm-hmm. And if you're both paying for it or, you know, or if you. You're going to pay, like, you know, people have separate money. And they'd be like, look, you pay your stuff, I pay my stuff. Then maybe you get what your credit allows you to get. Mm -hmm. And if the partner wants more, then, okay, well, let's talk about it. You got to kind of get on board. My credit can't do it. So you may have to co-sign if we want to get, like, a nicer car. So here's the interesting thing. What I'm hearing from you is working together, being a partnership And having conversation about how you maneuver. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm curious, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being very important, how important is the credit score itself or the, the credit report? How important is that to you as you're thinking about the overall financial situation that couples get into? So... I have gone back and forth on how I feel about this because sometimes I'm like, you know, I don't really care because I don't use credit like that. If I use credit, it's strictly as a convenience because I don't have, you know, balances. I don't have a bunch of cards and stuff like that. And we even think about think about credit cards differently, which we'll have to get into an episode in the future. TBD. And, um, you know, I'm saying all of this to say that I still like today I have a a really good credit score, but I have, you know, corporate credit card, you know, things like that. And so if I had to say a number, I think now I would say it's it's probably an eight, but I still don't rely on credit. But that's because I have great credit. I was going to say, like, you get to say that it's. Like you, it, it's it a matters. Twenty two. It almost. matters, but you get to say it doesn't matter quite as much because you don't need it like we used to back right. in the day. And I've got a great credit score. Yeah. Now. So I think so. My number isn't as high. Um. So on a scale of one to ten, I'm probably a six and a half on how much I care about scores, because like you said in the very beginning, like. It is not the whole story. You mentioned it a couple times today that, you know, it it a person could be working on it or they could be out of debt. It could be a yep. cash payer, that kind of person. And I'm much more of a cash person, but I'm also jaded. I will v- be very honest and say I'm jaded. I don't care as much about the score. You see the downside of I credit do. cards more frequently than the average person just because of the work and the business you're in. Right. So I see people who have been hurt and burned by it all the time. And when you, for us, like when all you have in terms of debt is a mortgage, your 
score will level out. I, I haven't been doing anything to like really help my score, like using credit and paying it off and all that kind of stuff. Like it, when you don't participate in the system as much, it levels off and it doesn't move right. very much. And then when we pay off our mortgage, there will be, it'll take about a year or two and then we won't have a score because they can't calculate it if you don't have open credit that is being used. And so at some point it won't matter Right. overall and so at some point my score is going to be zero yes and so the thing is is that when you are um when you have when it has to matter i think you should do what you need to do to ensure that your online reputation your credit score and report are favorable and healthy when it matters less you get the privilege of being able right. to step away from caring as much. And that's that's the catch-22 is like being in debt and having to care and having all the things to juggle and play their game. And, and then when you're not in debt, you don't have to play the game as much. And I think part of it is like having a high score now is a result of all the responsible things that we've done over the years, you know, to eliminate debt, to be consistent with – you know, all those things we talked about, payments and, you know, paying our utilities and mortgage and all that stuff on time. So I think that all comes back to doing the right thing. So it's almost like having a high score now feels like justification of all the things mm, that we've done yeah. properly. And that might be why I ascribe, you know, a higher score to it now. But I don't even worry about it because I'm what credit card companies hate. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they're they not going to get interest out of you. Right, so. they, they hate somebody like me. Yeah. If I use a credit card, it's like purely out of convenience because yeah. I'm making a large purchase or I'm buying something or I just don't trust, you know, the, the source I'm buying from. Or mm-hmm. We're going to get into it, TBD. Right. So yeah. how do we make it worth it, husband? Well, as always, I'll be consistent and say, you know, be on the same page with the plan that you have as far as where you're going. It doesn't matter where you come from, because once you get into a relationship and, you know, you're you're going down the road, if it's just, you know, long term partner or if it's, you know, going to end in marriage, decide where you're going and work towards that and then be on the same page on how you're going to move and maneuver and, you know, use credit in the way that you need to for the short time while you work the plan. And I think that's the key is have a plan and continue to work the plan to get to the higher level that you want to be debt freedom, be it, you know, having, you know, uh, an established savings and the, the plan, the plan, the plan. That's I can't iterate that enough. OK. And you, how do you talk about making it worth it in this situation? I would say the biggest thing for me is don't judge a book by the credit score. How about that? (laughs) Um, I I think that's good. Yes. So don't look at your partner or somebody you're dating um, with disdain or mistrust There's more to that story, and I would encourage you to hear their story and to understand what is behind what has occurred and why they're there, be it good or bad. I think we can learn from those who are doing really well with their credit and then those who have had some challenges with it as well. And I think um, making sure that you don't only see one side to a person's financial life by a three digit score. And so that to me is what would be worth it in a relationship. So you're saying don't leave them at the altar? True. <laughs> Let's how about that? I love it. Don't leave them at the altar, y'all, because you know, they, they got more there, there's more to come. How about that? More to come. So right, right, right. Well, until next time, guys. We're out. Thank you for spending some of your time with us today. We appreciate all of your support. So be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us wherever you listen to this podcast. You can find us on Instagram at For Better and Worth. And sign up to receive our free guide, The Seven Reasons Your Money Relationship Isn't Working With Your Partner, on ForBetterAndWorth.com. Until next time, we're out of here.